Okay. So, I'm going to try and do a little DVD architect here. So we start it up. Okay, this already has a project loaded that I've already been working on. Um, you know, just to give you some ideas of what you can do with uh, menus and things like that. But uh, let's start up a new project. So I'm going to go up here and click File. And then I'm going to say New. Now you get this new project uh, window here. Now, if all you wanted to do was just put a single movie on a DVD and just have it play with no menus or anything like that, you can just click over here where it says Single Movie, and then you'd pick your uh, video format, which for your 16 millimeter films would be uh, NTSC 720 by 480 that would be the format you'd want and you'd say OK now it's going to ask you what movie you want to put in it so you would browse through here and find your movies wherever they might be and um, let's see where do I have a MPEG movie here Gotta look in the right place. Now, since I said the format is 4x3, I guess I should pick a 4x3 movie if I have any here. Which I think I probably do have something. Here's a MPEG file. It's a 4x3 movie, and since I said 4x3, that's what I'm going to use. The AC3 file for it is over here with the same file name. So when I double click this, it's going to pick both the uh, MPEG file and the AC3 audio file to go along with it. So now that's pretty much all there is to it. Now if I click Preview, and say preview disk show you what it's going to do. It's just going to play just like that. So it's really not too much to it, is there? <laughs> uh, so once you're done with this, there's a close button up here to close the preview window. Now you would say make DVD with this button up here. And then it gives you some options here. Prepare just does takes the project and does the rendering and whatnot to create the menus and whatever. And that would be just to create a file on your hard disk, but not actually to burn it. If you select the burn option down here, then you get a couple of choices for burning source, your current project, that's what you'd want to burn from unless you had previously done the prepare function then you could select previously prepared folder here and point to that and and burn a disk from a previously prepared um, disk image that uh, you know you then you wouldn't have to go through any rendering or anything because it would presumably already be done then you would set this uh, burn prepare folder to wherever you have some space to store the files. It defaults to going on your C drive, but I don't like putting these big files on my C drive, so I have another place I put them. Uh, so I'll go to the DVD architect directory and pick a folder here. Now if you had previously rendered a video 
and made a few changes and you were about to render it again, it would know that it had data from the last attempt and down here where it says no smart prepare data available. If, if this was uh, not a brand new project but a continuation effort on something else, it would tell you here how much that it thought it could reuse of the previous project. So then you'd click next. Now this says it already has data in this folder I picked because I just picked a scratch folder so I'm going to just say yes to that. And then if there's any warning messages or any problems with your uh, setup, it would tell you here what those problems are. Um, the nature of this particular movie, because we said it was just a single movie compila a single movie without menus or anything like that, you always get an error message that says the end action of the movie uses the most recent menu command before the menu is reached. So. Uh, that that's just what happens because you don't really have a menu but uh, the nature of a DVD is that it thinks it needs to have a menu even if it doesn't actually display so these these errors are kind of meaningless here these two particular errors about you know using the menu before it was reached so we can ignore those um, then there's another set of messages here about subtitles and menu highlight masks and since there's no menus or anything of course there's no messages there you say next again now here you can fill in your information if you want to give the volume the disk uh, volume name uh, if you have multiple burners you'll have a option here to select which one and then also has this ISO image writer which could allow you to uh, generate an ISO image which is a image file of a DVD that could later be used in a program like Nero to actually burn a DVD. So we select our, our burner. The burning speed, uh, generally you'll find for the best compatibility with DVD players that you shouldn't really go much over 4x burning speed, but uh, it, it, you know, with, with my own DVD players here, I know that uh, I can burn at higher speeds and, and my players I'll play them okay, but if you're burning discs to give to other people or to play on other players other than ones that you know uh, work well with discs that, that are homemade discs, you probably should limit yourself to 4x, excuse me, 4x burning speed. And then, uh, well, if your disc, if you had a DVD RW disc in your drive, which I, I don't have any disc in my drive right now which is why a lot of this stuff is all grayed out, but if I had a disc in there, you'd have these options about erasing, quick erase, full erase, so on. And then finally you would just click finish and it would go through the process and render your movie. And that's really all there is to it, to make a simple one movie DVD with no menus or anything like that. Um, I'm not actually going to go ahead and burn a disc of this because uh, that would just take a long time and just be sitting here staring at the screen, so I don't think we need to do that. So I'm just going to cancel this for now.